Welcome to the Pure and Simple Podcast, where the real truth is made clear. Here is your host, Jacob Bain. Hello, everyone. This is Jacob Bain, and I'm here with Mark Hicks, and welcome to the Pure and Simple Podcast. A little about myself, I'm married to my lovely wife, Bianca, and we have two beautiful children, Isaiah and Sadie. I have been in ministry since 2017 and growing in grace ever since. I help direct and oversee Nations Arise Ministries, which is a missions ministry dedicated to teaching children about Jesus and reaching the lost and helping to train and equip local leaders in their local communities throughout the world. We are a part of Life of Faith Church located in Birmingham, Alabama. This podcast is an extension of Nations Arise Ministries. We will talk more about that later. But first, let me introduce you to my good friend, Mark Hicks. Hey, guys. How's everyone doing? Mark Hicks here. Um, I've been married going on 11 years now, and uh, I got introduced to Grace back in 2010. And uh, wow, it's just blessed me so much to understand the grace of God. Uh, been ministering ever since then. I've been knowing you since, I think, 2010. Mm-hmm. And um, I can tell you this. The first time that I ever heard about Grace was from this guy right here. Um, <laughs> I remember it like it was yesterday because... I grew up in the church. I struggled uh, trying to live for God because I was living without the knowledge of who I was in Christ. But Mark Hicks shared with me uh, grace for the first time in the back of a five-ton uh, military vehicle. Yep. And I remember it like it was yesterday. And he told me about grace, and he told me that God loved me and that there was something special about me and that he lived in me. And ever since, I haven't looked back. Um, so I can tell you right now, a clear revelation of grace will change your life. That's right. And, and it's, it's amazing. And so this ministry right here is a fruit of that, what took place uh, back in 2010, I guess. Amen. But it's, 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 it's amazing. But glad you're here, Mark. And uh, we're going to be uh, developing this, uh, this podcast as we go. It's going to get better and better. And so uh, give us a little grace as we get mm-hmm. this thing off the ground. But uh, anyways... Um, I want to briefly share why we are doing this podcast. Uh, Back in October of last year of 2020, the Lord really put it on my heart to begin moving into media ministry. Uh, This is the initiation of that. Um, The purpose is to bring clarity through the Word of God. We want to take away the confusion that people have. We want to have real discussions about real life issues. We want to reach people who don't know Jesus. We want to help people who are stuck in religious works. And we want to help lead people into an awesome relationship with Jesus. Primarily, this podcast is about keeping the word simple and speaking the truth in love. And that's why we named this podcast Pure and Simple. And with that, we are going to roll right into our first topic, the gospel. All right, so um, there's so much we can talk about uh, regarding the gospel, but let me tell you my experience that I've encountered uh, as a Christian. Uh, Until I was 25 years old, I had no idea what the gospel was. I grew up in church my whole life, but I had no um, clarity about the truth of the gospel and how to communicate that gospel. In fact, I was not living for God because I had a um, uh, the wrong idea of what the gospel was. And I'm, I'm sure you was like that too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mark, you know, he grew up in a strict... Uh, Holiness uh, background. Oh, yeah, there you go. Mm-hmm. A, a strict uh, religious background. Yeah. And uh, what that does, it, it just... You can love God with all your heart, and, and you're trying to live for him uh, out of your own effort, out of your own works, and what that does, it just burns you out. Mm-hmm. And that's why so many Christians leave the church. They, they're tired of failing and never being good enough. They're always trying to please God, and that's what happened to me, and that's what happened to Mark. Oh, I, yeah. I love God with all my heart, but I would, I would always fail because I was trying to live out of my self-effort. And when I heard the grace message, and when I heard about what the gospel really was, man, it, it changed my life. And so uh, we want to start off talking about the gospel as if you've never heard about it for the first time. So we're going to bring it, break it down to the basic level, because um, I believe it's, it's, it's more powerful uh, when you keep it simple. Mm-hmm. And, and don't think that you have to uh, 
uh, be a theologian. You have to know a thousand scriptures and, and references to be able to speak the gospel. No, you just share it straight from your heart, and that's what impacts people. And so um, let's, let's start off with the gospel. Like, what does the gospel really mean? The gospel is good news. I mean, you can't get no more plain than that. It's the good news of Jesus Christ, and that's what the word gospel even means. It means good news. Uh, and uh, it's also note that it's news. News is something that's past tense. You see it on the TV, and it's something that's proclaimed from the day before or even before that. So it's news, something that's already happened. That's right. And, and like, uh, if you present the message in a bad way or if it comes across as bad news, then basically you're not ministering the gospel. It's truth. Yeah. So you have to minister, uh, excuse me, you have to minister it in a way that comes across as good news. Or yeah, I'm not saying everything is a feel-good message, but you're delivering a message that's setting people free. Mm-hmm. And so in a sense, you're giving a good message. So if the person hearing that message comes away feeling condemned, uh, down, hurt, feeling like they're this big, you haven't ministered the gospel. That's true. All right. So uh, let's take a look at Acts chapter 20, verse 24. And um, in this verse of scripture, um, I I read over it thousands of times until I saw it. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm going to read it to you. It says, um, but none of these things move me nor do I count my life dear to myself so that I may finish my race with joy in the ministry which I received from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. Amen. All right. So this was the Apostle Paul. You know, he received the gospel directly from Jesus. He, he grew up in the law. He grew up in legalism. And he was, you know, judging and condemning Christians in the early stage of the church. And I believe he even held the coats of men that stoned Stephen, right? That's right. And so here's a man that God gave the gospel to. Jesus himself presented the gospel to him. So he gave us a definition right, right here mm-hmm. of what the gospel is. It's the gospel of the grace of God. Yep. And so when we minister, we need to share what the grace of God is. Could you tell us about grace, what grace is? So what's interesting about this verse you just gave in 24, um, notice he says, to testify of the gospel of the grace of God. I like how he uses the word gospel and grace interchangeably right there. Mm -hmm. So it is my humble opinion, and also according to a few verses in the Bible, that the gospel is the grace of God. The grace of God is the gospel. And, um, you know, the word grace is something we don't deserve. It's something that's undeserved. It's something that, that we can't work for. It's a free gift. It's something that Jesus Christ has given us for free. That's what grace is. It's undeserved. It's favor of God is undeserved. And you never hear that said much. Um, it, most people are in tune uh, to trying to earn something because we live in this world. Like you, you have to earn a living. Mm-hmm. You have, if you want to have money to pay your bills, you got to go out there and make money and pay your bills. And so if you don't go out there and perform, uh, you're not going to have everything that you need. So there's this performance mentality. That's right. Uh, that we have naturally, you know, if you don't go to work, you're going to get fired. Mm-hmm. You know? And so we kind of relate with God that way, but that's wrong. See, God's not judging us based on how good we live. He's based, he's judging us based on, uh, how good Jesus is. That's right. Right. And so Jesus was perfect. And when we receive Jesus, we receive those works. His identity. And so, that's yes, right. right. And so God's looking at us and he's, he's pleased. He's happy. Mm-hmm. Amen. Um, so we already know that the gospel is good news, mm-hmm. and we know that it's about God's grace. And it's simple. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a verse right here out of 2 Corinthians eleven three. 3. It says, But I fear lest somehow, as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. I'm glad you shared that. Um, wow. I had something. <laughs> I, um, I read that verse of Scripture on Facebook. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, Most of you, or many of you may know uh, Shane Holsgrove. He's a minister from South Africa. And he had posted that uh, verse on Facebook, and he wrote this. um, Excuse me. It says, if what someone is teaching is complicated and even confusing, just run. Yes. You probably aren't missing anything. The gospel is simple. Don't overcomplicate it. That's it. (laughs) 
That that's is, right. that's, that's amazing, right? Yep. I'm in a relationship with God and it's not complicated. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it. The gospel is simple. The more simple you keep it, the more basic you keep it, the more powerful it is. That's right. When you start to uh, uh, put your own theology in with it, if you start to uh, add your own ideas mm-hmm. and, 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 and um, preconceived notions about how God is, you're diluting the word of God and you're making it of no effect. That's right. You know, a lot of people get into these fables and myths and all these mythical things of Jews, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, people celebrate certain holidays and stuff. That's cool. But, you know, keep it simple. You know, the simplicity of Christ is what's going to reach people. The simplicity of Christ is the gospel. That's what's going to reach people. That's what's going to set people free. That's right. Uh, I want to share some wrong examples on how to present the gospel, uh, because I believe uh, uh, this may ring a bell with you. Uh, When I grew up, there were sayings that were very common mm-hmm. and people at the end when people said, that's the gospel, you'd hear things like turn or burn, get right or get left. God's going to judge you. Mm-hmm. You better get saved. You better go to church. Mm-hmm. Are you tithing? Are you doing all these things? And so we're presenting a gospel in a way that's condemning and judging like God is sending people to hell. Right. You know what? God's not sending people to hell. They're going there on their own. God is saving people from hell. Mm -hmm. through Jesus. And so it's the way you present that, okay? There is a hell, okay? There's a lot of people that have gone weird, okay? Mm -hmm. They're saying there's no hell. No, there is a hell, okay? The only way to save us was to judge sin in the flesh, and Jesus did that. Um, And so I want to say this, though, that Jesus, when he uh, died on that cross, he removed every sin. He removed everything that we ever would do wrong in our life in that moment. Okay, and all we do is by faith is believe and we receive his righteousness. Simple. Yep. You know, and what you just said is so true. He removed not just some sin. He removed the past sins, the present sins, and the future sins. Um, a lot of people have a hard time with that because they say, well, how can I get saved or how can I stay saved? He, you know, I haven't even, you know, the future sins and stuff. Well, if you look at it like this, it makes sense. When Jesus died on a cross, you know, that was our past sins. Uh 2,000 years ago, that was our future sins also, you know. Uh, he only did it once. He's only gone down across once, and that was it, you know. And so all sin was forgiven, and not just some of it. I mean, all of it. And and how simple is that? You just receive Jesus Christ into your life, and you get to partake in that. No more sin in your life. You know, and some people have a hard time with that. But, you know, oh, I still sin. I still make mistakes. Yeah, in your flesh you do, but we relate to God in what? Spirit and in truth. truth that's right. Amen. Well, that's really good what you said. Um, think about it. You know, if 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 every time you sin, you know, Jesus would have to come back down mm-hmm. and die and pay for your sin over and over again if future sins weren't paid for. That's right. But they are paid for. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. At when he was when he died on the cross, what did he say? He said, "It is finished." It is finished. There's nothing left to do. That's right. Now it's just up to us to believe what has been done. And so as we believe, we receive the gift of righteousness. Uh It's applied to us. And we'll share more about that later. We have many, many scriptures to talk about. Oh, yeah. Um, But let's move into this. Um, Let's check out Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. It says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Wow. That's a powerful, powerful verse. Read so many times, but so easily overlooked. That's right. And so here, here you see it says the gospel of Christ. And in Acts that we read before, it says the gospel of the grace of God. Uh Okay? So grace and Jesus is interchangeable here. Jesus is grace. Mm -hmm. Grace and truth came by Jesus. Grace is not just unmerited favor. That's right. It is who Jesus is. It's his his very nature. Mm -hmm. It's his character. It's the way that God relates to us. And as we receive grace... As we receive grace, we reign in life. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So let's focus on two words, though, right here. Mm-hmm. You know, we talked about 
the gospel. It's good news. That's right. It's a good message. So it's the good message of Jesus and what he's done for us. But let's look at the word salvation. Not many people know what salvation is. Salvation is a church word. Mm -hmm. Um, You really can't use the word salvation just with the average person out there in the streets. Not many people understand what salvation is. So Mm -hmm. we as um, believers that have been enlightened, that have this word of truth, and we understand people Mm -hmm. in the church, they understand what salvation is. Uh, but we have to be careful when we're ministering, you know, not to use language that people don't understand. Right. And what religion does is it talks over people's head. And we got to be careful that when we are ministering is don't have these um, this idea that people understand everything that's in the Bible. No, right. they don't. They don't. And so we have to break it down piece by piece mm-hmm. and, and bring it and present it in a way that's easy to understand. And so that's what we're going to do right now about with the word salvation. You know, salvation, most people have a basic knowledge. It means the saving of the soul. And that's mm-hmm. true. Yeah. But salvation means so much more. Mm-hmm. Yep. Deliverance, health, healing, um, to be rescued. That's right. There's a few things. Yeah, a lot of people don't know salvation means health. Like right now, health. Not just when we get to heaven, when we have a new body. No, we can experience health right now. And I think it's important that we have that revelation of salvation Mm -hmm. because we're living in a world that's full of sickness, full of disease. You know, things happen. Mm -hmm. Okay. We've all, we all know people. We've all had things, um, health problems ourselves. We've all seen people, um, suffer. We've Mm -hmm. had many loved ones die, you know, right now with COVID going on, there's people just living in fear. Um, but if they had a knowledge of what salvation is in that, uh, through the gospel, mm-hmm. that they have salvation, that they have right now health, wholeness, and peace and joy in their oh, body. Yeah. They wouldn't be f- afraid. Uh, I really believe that fear is killing people. Oh, me too. Yeah. Yeah. I believe people, when they hear they, when they get that COVID test, oh, they think they're going to die. Oh, yeah. They, they go to the hospital mm-hmm. and they get separated. They get secluded from all their family. They don't have any words of encouragement. They don't have, they don't, they don't even let, pastors in to see these people because they might get infected. So the world is actually blocking the church and, yeah. and loved ones from going in there mm-hmm. and giving them real encouragement. Hey, fight That's this, right. fight this. You're going to live. Uh, see the, I, I speak, I don't want to speak bad about anybody in the medical profession. I have many family members that are in the medical profession and I love them. And I think I'm very thankful for their work. Definitely. Yeah. But, they approach it from a natural standpoint. Scientific. Yeah. They don't, yeah. they're not approaching it from a spiritual standpoint. Okay. Mm-hmm. We got to realize that we need to start in the spiritual. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying refuse to go to the hospital. No, I think we should get he- uh, healed in any way that we can. Right. But we got to start with the word of God and believe what the word says about us. That's good. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not against going to the hospitals and either, you know, but, but we can't live in fear because fear will kill. You know, the Bible says that death and life is in the power of the tongue, you know, and when you're in that kind of situation, there's a lot of bad things that's being spoke over you. Um, you know, a lot of fear, the doctors can scare you, you know, and so it's important to know who you are in Christ and to understand what the word salvation means and also what the gospel means, you know, back to, you know, back to verse 16 right there in Romans one, you know, he said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. What is the power of God to salvation? The gospel. Amen. The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. That is the power of God. I, I don't even have to preach healing. I just give them the gospel, the good news. That's the power. Amen. But, you know, in that word salvation right there, there's everything. So that's that's a powerful verse right there. So powerful. Yeah. So if, if the gospel is the power of God to salvation, right, mm-hmm. and we were just talking about health, if, if we're sick. We need to be hearing the gospel. That's right. Good news. Over and over again. I'm talking about flood our ears with the gospel. Mm-hmm. No, don't turn on mixed messages. Don't, that's right. Don't turn on something that's <laughs> going against what we're <laughs> saying. you got to be listening to the real gospel, the true gospel, the gospel that says you're healed. Yep. In spite of what you're seeing and feeling, you gotta, you got to listen to the good news, mm-hmm. okay? And not just that, for your finances, you know, if you're broke. We need to be listening to the gospel. It's going to it's gonna bless us. I mean, it's a spiritual thing. 
I can't tell you naturally how it's going to happen, how you're going to prosper right. by listening to the gospel. It's just going to happen That's right. because it's flowing from the Spirit of God. Amen. Mm-hmm. And so um, uh, it's important. You know, and when that fear of COVID does come over your life, if you truly understand the gospel and you truly know who you are in Christ, you're going to be like, hey, COVID, come take me. I'm going home with Jesus. That's right. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you understood this good news, this gospel, you know, there's nothing that's going to hold you back. You just take me, Lord, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. So, I mean, in the end, we're all going to die. That's right. So when you do die, we don't have to be um, fear fearful of death. I mean, we get to be with Jesus. That's I right. mean, how great that day is going to be, right? That's right. But uh, the reason why we don't want to get sick and die is because we have a purpose here. That's right. Okay? There's a plan for our life. And, and many people, they leave too soon. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't, believe one in, I don't believe for one minute that it's God's will for people to die early. No. Okay? If, if people die early, it's, it's because something they did or the enemy was yeah. behind it ultimately. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's right. So that's right. So we don't need to attribute that um, death to God. That's right. Okay. He he's come to give us life and he wants to give us life more abundantly. That's right. And that's the true nature of God. But we have to be in tune with that <laughs> that nature. We need to know that it's God's will for us to live. That's right. Okay. And so we don't know uh, why some people died. You know, I know of people in the church that died of, of COVID. It 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 upset me. Mm-hmm. It did. But you don't know what was in those people's heart. You don't know uh, uh, the underlying symptoms. You don't know what was going on with them when they died. So there's a lot of unknown answers here. But I can tell you this. Just because it seems like maybe uh, it didn't work with someone, don't stop believing, okay? Right. You need to keep your heart secure in the Word of God. Uh, while we're on the subject, I don't want to make this uh, about vaccines, but you know, I have I have many many uh, family and friends that that take the vaccine, and and I support their choice 100. percent I'm I'm not anti-vaccine. Okay, I I believe that uh, that it, there's some real um, results out there that show that it helps people. I, I believe main, mainly the the people that are older and mm-hmm. uh, that have underlying symptoms. It, it's not a bad idea to consider uh, getting that shot. But uh, for uh, younger people and people that are healthy and, 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 and that's been around COVID since it came out, I mean, I've been around everybody that's had COVID. We've, we've, but the, go- the gospel is keeping me safe. That's where my faith is. So I, I don't feel at this time the need to get the shot. But I think the biggest problem that we're seeing in this country right now is, is we're forcing, uh, we're taking away people's right to choose. Yeah. And we should never do that. We should stand for free will. There's, that's a godly principle. Free will is a godly principle. God, even if it's good, God would not force it on us because he honors free will. And we need to stand up for that same principle. That's right. People have a choice. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah, I just choose to trust my immune system. You know, um, I'm not against it either, but I, I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I'm going to trust my immune system, and I'm just going to believe that I'm walking in health and, you know, and, if if it came down to it, and I had to. I probably would, but um, I'm just going to keep believing for now. <laughs> That's right. Uh, I just <laughs> spoke with my mom about this um, the other day. She called and was telling me that um, she was exposed to a worker uh, at her job, and uh, the company made her uh, walk away and uh, or leave the job and clock out and go home. And uh, she has to quarantine for ten days just because she was uh, close to someone that had COVID. And I understand why. I mean, this is a liability issue for these companies, and, and, and they're doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, they're they they they're giving incentives to get the shot. And I told my mom, I mean, she's older, and, and I, I told her basically, I said, look, if you, if, if you feel the need to get it, if you have peace about it, go for it. Yeah. I don't want to lead you not to get it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, just pray over yourself as you're getting it. That's Say right. this shot's not going to harm my body. Mm-hmm. You know, put your faith in the Word of God more than you put your faith in the shot, right. okay, in scientists and all these things. They're, I'm not saying scientists are bad, but there's a lot of scientists that are bad. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of things that, that go on that, that people don't know about, okay? A lot of scientists uh, believe we come from monkeys, I'm just saying. That's right. I'm saying, yeah, <laughs> they believe in the, the Big Bang Theory. When I was a kid, that's what I was taught. I was taught that this just, there, was, there was just one bang. And if there was a bang, God caused it. That's right. <laughs> when he spoke the word, boom, boom it happened. 
but uh, they, they approach it from a, a natural mind. That's okay. Right. And so uh, we are, um, everything you see was birthed from the spirit. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so uh, we got to start there and the world's not, not doing that. That's good. That's right. So mm-hmm. anyway, let's move on. I don't want to stay there too long. Right. right. Um, we got about five minutes more. So we're going to, we're going to find a landing for this uh, first episode. But here, here's a topic right here uh, that I believe that we can pick back up on the next episode. But mm-hmm. grace and law do not mix. Ooh, hallelujah. Tell us about that, Mark. Well, let's, um, I'll tell you what, let's look at Hebrews right quick. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 7. And scroll down here to, let's see which verse we have here. Verse seventeen. I tell you what, yeah, let's 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 start in verse fifteen. It says, "And it is far more evident if, in the likeness of Melchizedek, there arises another priest who has come not according to the law of the fleshly commandment, but according to the power of an endless life. For he testifies, you are the priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. That's the prophecy of Jesus. And then verse seventeen, uh, eighteen, or here it says, for on the one hand there is an annulling." of the former commandment because of its weakness and unprofitableness. Wow. For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is a bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. I tell you what, if you could just get a hold of that verse right there in verse 18, I really believe it would end the conflict of law and grace. Um, He said the law made nothing perfect. Well, there's only one way to be perfect, and that's taking on the identity of perfection himself. That's Jesus Christ. And notice it says right here, it says annulling of the former commandment because of its weakness and unprofitableness. Is that speaking bad of the law? No, but it's weak and it's unprofitable because it cannot make you perfect. There's only one way to become perfect. And it's not through the law. It's not through the Ten Commandments. It's not through Moses or the prophets. You know, I want to say one more thing real quick. And I'll let you talk here. But, you know, when Jesus took Peter, James and John up on the mountain of transfiguration, you know, the Bible says that Peter woke up and he saw, you know, uh, Jesus in the middle of uh, Eli- Elijah and Moses. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Peter made a comment. He says, hey, should I build a tabernacle for you, for you three or a tent? And, you know, and God was like, hold up. He, <laughs> Jesus didn't have to say nothing. Even the father spoke up this time. He was like, no, listen, this is my beloved son. Hear him. Hear who? Moses? Hear who? Elijah? Hear who? Jesus. That's right. Not Moses, not Elijah, not not the law, not the prophets, but here who? Jesus. So, guys, the law is over. That's Simple. right. <laughs> that, that's, a, that's a good verse. I mean, that gave you a basic illustration of some things that we still see today. Oh, yeah. People want to look back at the law. They want to look at the traditions of Moses. Mm-hmm. They want to go to the books of Moses and say, this is how we need to live today. You know, look, the law is holy. Yes, it's perfect That's right. for the purpose that it was designed That's by right. God, right? That's right. It had a purpose. You know, God never wanted to give the law in the first no, place. You know, the people, you know, they they complained. Uh-huh. You know, they wanted to be righteous, the Jews. They wanted to be righteous based on how they lived. And they wanted God to judge them based on their goodness, goodness not his goodness. That's right. And so God says, okay, well, here's the law. That's right. It was designed to show them their need for a savior. Oh, yes. Amen. That's exactly what it does. Mm-hmm. In fact, you know, when it comes to legalism and those who are high and proud, mm-hmm. these modern day Pharisees, I don't mean to, you know, sound mean or nothing, but it's facts. There are people out here who think that they can not sin and, you know, and live a life that's in perfection, um, according to their flesh, by the way, because we know that in Christ we are perfect. That's right. But, you know, the law you know, anytime somebody tells me, well, I don't sin, I don't sin, I'll say, well, hold up, man, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 22 right quick, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I promise you, yep. or I'll find something in here yep. where you're you're messing up. <laughs> That's right. Well, I mean, if you if you choose to keep the law, you got to keep the whole law, That's right? That's right. If you offend at one point, you're guilty of it all. That's right. And so if we're keeping the law, we got to, you know, we got to make a sacrifice for our sins, you know? Mm-hmm. And I haven't ever sacrificed a, a lamb nope, nope. when I sin. And I can guarantee you, Nearly most all people have not done that. <laughs> so uh, keep that in mind. If you want to live under the law, you got to keep it all. You got to keep every all. little standard. And so um, we're going. We're at the end of this uh, podcast. Uh-huh. Um, uh, it was a good start, uh, but we have so much more to talk to uh, uh-huh. talk about. So we're going to pick right back up uh, where we left off on the next episode. 
But uh, I don't want to close an episode without um, uh, giving someone the opportunity to make Jesus their Lord. Yes. And so um, in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, it says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Simple. Real simple. I mean, I chose that one because it's one of the most simple. That's right. Anybody in the whole world, regardless of what you've done, regardless of what you're doing right now, Mm -hmm. if you call on the name of the Lord, you will be saved. That's right. I can promise you that. That's right. And so if you don't know Jesus right now, will you say this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I want you to come into my life and to save me from my sin. I give you my whole heart. I believe that you are the Son of God, and you are my Savior. I receive my new spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you said that prayer, you are born again. Right. Never doubt it. Believe it. Don't matter. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you make from this day forward. You're born again. Remember that prayer that you said. Right. Have faith. Amen. That's right. And so for everybody else, I just declare the blessing of the Lord on you all, and we will see you next time. Thank you for tuning in to Pure and Simple Podcast. We hope you were blessed by today's message. If you'd like to support our show or ministry, please visit nationsarise.org forward slash give.